What's up everybody, welcome back for another EVE Online video. In this video I'm going to be going over the um, player owned star bases or the uh, POS as you've probably heard it referred to. I'm going to go over the useful equipment that uh, it, I commonly use for these and show you the uh, setup process, the fueling process and just how to kind of get everything going and set up and then kind of what the benefit is of owning a POS in uh, NullSec. Now, you can have a POS in high sec. It just requires charters, which you can either get from LP store. Um, if you're in null sec, the only requirement is uh, for fuel is going to be your blocks and your uh, your strawn. First thing I want to talk about before we actually get into space is the roles required to operate and deploy the uh, player owned star bases. Now, these are deployed for a corporation and they you can have access, you can allow access for a corporation or alliance. But in order to actually deploy it for a corporation, you have to have certain roles in your corporation. If you already, if you just own your own corporation and you're a director, you're gonna have all these. So I'm gonna run through the different roles that pertain to the pluses inside the corporation settings. On the center of the screen here, you can see this is a list of all of the roles inside of a corporation. The ones we're looking at in particular for what we're doing is the config starbase equipment. This will allow the member to deploy and configure the starbase structure in space. There's also a starbase defense operation, and this will allow them to operate defensive starbase structures, which I'll go over a little of those. And then we have starbase fuel technician. This would be allow a member to refuel the star bases and take from uh, silo bins. Now keep in mind that this um, star base equipment, this config uh, star base equipment is different than your regular config equipment role. Um, generally speaking, the person or the member that I have running this is usually the person that just has all the roles for deploying things in space anyway, um, or I just do it on alt myself. But if you're gonna delegate this task to refueling or operation or just deploying, you're going to at least need just to mess with it to offline and online it. You're going to need the Starbase equipment role for that member. Next thing I'm going to be talking about is going to be placement. And then we'll go over the uh, the items that I'll be uh, showcasing uh, their use in this video. Now, POSs, player owned Starbases, they have to be anchored around moons that don't already have a POS in the area or around that moon. And so. What I'm going to go over right now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually get work on anchoring the uh, the control tower itself. And I'll just kind of go over the uh, different types of, uh, or just go over the specifics for those control towers. Each faction has its own control tower, and it also has three different versions of the control tower. There'll be a control tower small, a control tower medium, and then a regular control tower. For this video, I'm going to be using the Kaldari control tower, which is the larger size. The biggest difference between the three sizes is going to be the force field size, the volume and weight, the fuel requirement, and the strong requirement per hour, and then also just the bonuses um, from the different types of factions. So for the largest type of Kaldari, we're going to be using nitrogen fuel blocks, and I usually drop this with like a DST or a blockade runner because its volume is 8,000 uh, cubic meters and I'll go down if you go for a, a medium or a small and then its force field is um, 30k the force field for the medium is like 21 kilometers and then the uh, force field radius for the small is like 15 going over fuel requirements here since we're using Kaldari well, our, our requirement is going to be nitrogen fuel blocks for the large is going to use 40 per hour the medium will use 20 and then for the small, it'll use 10. And then the strong for the large, it will be 400 per hour, 200 an hour for the medium, and then 100 an hour for the small. The strong will only get consumed if the tower is attacked and it has to recharge shield. Otherwise, the strong will just stay there uh, until it's needed to recharge that shield. These charters up here, these are uh, used for anchoring in high sec. You can get these from you know loyalty point stores um, or just the market. They're relatively cheap. But as you can see here, depending on which empire um, factions of space you're in, you're gonna require its own charter, which it'll use one per hour. So if you are gonna anchor this or anchor a pause in high sec, make sure you calculate 
your charter need for as long as you want to keep it active. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to we're going to work on just actually struck or anchoring the POS itself, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. So and then we'll talk about all these other items that I've got carrying here as well. So as long as I'm around a moon. And as long as I have a character that has all the roles for the corporation required to deploy this, I can go over here and I can go to launch for corporation. What that's going to do is it's going to spit it off into space here, as you can see. And then I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go to anchor structure. And it'll take a second here. What that's going to do is it's going to reposition it to where it needs to be. And as you can see here, it has an anchoring timer of 29 minutes or 30 minutes um, to go completely anchored. The next phase after that 30 minutes passes is we will go into onlining and then we'll uh, kind of come back and uh, go from there. Now that the pause is anchored, the next thing we're going to do is onlining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to open up the fuel bay and then I'm going to right click and open up Strant. We're not going to add Strant yet, but we're going to add some fuel. The fuel bay on these will hold 140,000 cubic meters, and then the strong bay will hold 50,000 cubic meters. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop some fuel in here. To fill it up, it's gonna take 28,000 fuel blocks. And then we're gonna go here and right click on it again. And then we're gonna go down here and put, put online. Now that's gonna take another 30 minutes so what I normally do, if I have a structure and system, I'll go dock up, set a timer on my phone, or set a timer somewhere and come back. Or if I'm in a system I'm setting up for the first time, whether it be like a mining system for farming or ratting or whatever, then I'll just safe log in space and then uh, come back online when I have about a minute left on that timer. Once we come back after onlining, we'll set up all the permissions, we'll get the force field up and running, and then I'll start going over the other items that I've got with me for this starbase. Now that the control tower is online, the next thing we're going to be doing is getting the force field active. And I'll also go through some of the settings in the manage tab and show you kind of what that looks like. So what you want to do is you want to right click and you want to go to manage. And the first thing we want to do is actually get that force field turned on. So in the general tab, what you'll see is the force field status, which is inactive right now. The purpose of the passcode is if someone is not in your alliance and not in your corporation, then they can have that passcode and they can get into the uh, force field. And what you can do here is whatever you set here and you give that passcode to somebody, if they go down here to their capacitor and they right click and they go to enter Starbase force field password, that's where they would put it in. So that if they warp to a nav inside of the force field, they uh, or would they be able to go straight through it. Otherwise, they will stop on the outside. I'm gonna have allow corporation members uh, usage checked and then also alliance member usage checked. Then you have notification settings here as well. So I'm just gonna put in like just a regular password that I'm never gonna give out. And then you can hit apply. And then the force field will go online, uh, just like that. You can see it's a nice 30K radius there. And so now that's um, set up. The defense tab here will you can set your sentry guns to use alliance standings and then attack um, on lower than security rating and attack if at war and, and things like that. The other useful tab to look at here is process and the fuel tab. With the current fuel that is in the fuel bay and the strong bay, this will show we will have 29 days and three hours until this needs to be refueled, so almost a month. And then it shows one day and 17 hours for reinforced shield recharge with what we have in there as well the next thing we we'll do is we're going to go over the items that i brought with me just kind of give you an idea of some of the add-ons you can put inside here i'd say probably one of the more useful for me because i just run my own corporation and i like using the uh, corporate hanger array and just like with everything else you're going to want the process is anchoring and then onlining these don't actually affect the fuel uh, usage of the boss at all so having these is a, a benefit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this as it goes into space like we did with the control tower. We're gonna go to anchor and then these arrows are gonna pop up. You don't, these doesn't have to be like super precise, right? Because the access range for these um, add-ons is pretty good. 
but uh, generally speaking, I like to, you know, try to make it nice and neat if possible. And then you can try to anchor here. Um, and then sometimes you have to kind of like reposition them because they have to be certain distances away from things. So as you can see, that only took like, you know, a second or two to actually anchor. And then we're actually going to go on here and put online. And so since that's a corporate um, hanger array, what that's going to do is it's basically going to give you access to a set of corporate hangers. Um, and obviously, you know, you'd have to have the roles in order to access those in your corporation for this to be useful. But you'd right click and go to access storage. And each one of your hangers is going to have a capacity of 3 million cubic meters, which is amazing for like storing ore. Or if you're doing like moon mining, you can use this as a stop off to uh, empty things out and everything. But keep in mind, this is only for corporation hangers. Um, so if you don't have roles to access those in your corporation, then this won't benefit you very much. But for corporation, um, for corporation um, admins, this is a, uh, a pretty neat little thing to have. The next thing I'm going to show you is the personal hanger array. We're going to launch that for corporation just, just like we did with the uh, corporation one. And then I'm going to go down here and go to anchor. I'm going to put this a little bit further over here and then we'll right click on that arrow and go to anchor here and then we'll wait for that to anchor and then what i'll do is while we're waiting on that i'm gonna go ahead and drop this uh ship maintenance array which uh is also a very useful add-on as well we'll just drag that over here somewhere we're gonna go ahead and right click on this personal hanger array and we're gonna go to um access storage on here as well and as you can see here this would be just a normal hanger that you can use personally and this would be uh, 50,000 uh, cubic meters for storage on on that. And then we'll go over here and look at this uh, ship maintenance array. You can either access, you can either store your vehicle in here or you can access vessel. And what this does is this allows you to store 20 million cubic meters in this, which is a lot of space. Um, highly recommended. We usually put like, um, response fleets ships in here like caracals anything that like you know we can come to pause switch out of mining ships or switch out of ratting ships and get into something that's a little bit more um anti you know you know, we can go fight on the ess with or you know go hunt somebody down with we usually keep a an array of uh pvp ships in here for this next thing i'm gonna go over is going to be the defensive um add-ons and those are going to be placed outside of the force field i usually put them along the top and or along the bottom of the force field you can put as many of these as you want but keep in mind on your weapon systems you're gonna have to uh have them uh have ammo in them and everything so on this cruise missile i'm gonna go ahead and launch corporation and then when i click on it i'm gonna go to anchor structure and if i try to anchor it inside as you'll see here it won't let me it says it has to be uh uh quite a bit of ways away so I'm just going to bring it all the way up and what I, another trick you can do here is you can actually um once it starts anchoring you can actually look at it and it allows you to move around a little bit better all right so you got as you can see here the distance up here it's got to be quite a ways away from here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over here and I'm going to hit look at and this will allow me to actually more easily place everything else I'm gonna put up here so now that this is anchored, we're going to go ahead and put this online. It takes uh, two minutes to online. And then what we also can do is access ammo. And we're going to go and drop in these uh, Inferno cruise missiles. The thing about this is you have to only put basic, you can only put basic ammo in these. So no tech two ammo, uh, nothing crazy. So we're just using just generic, you know, Inferno or just whatever. Um, just the very baseline ammo for all your missiles, cruise missiles, projectile weapons, and everything like that. This will hold uh, 3,500 cubic meters of ammo, which is about 70,000 rounds. So keep that in mind if you're putting up multiple, um, multiple sentries that you need enough ammo to uh, kind of go between them all. Now I brought this, um, while well, that's anchoring, we'll talk a little bit. I brought this uh, compression array. Um, these used to be really useful. Um, we, ever since the uh, compression came out on like uh, orcas and porpoises, these have been deactivated. 
but how these normally um, worked would be you would drop ore into them and based on how much ore you were trying to compress uh, it would give you a timer it was super inefficient but it was you know not bad to have um, you know earlier in the year or late last year um, I kind of wanted to just talk about a little bit but um, and in kind of the same vein as like you know compression you know if you're running a Rorkel or if you're running an Orca or whatever the case may be and you're not wanting to siege on site being able to go to a POS and then turn on siege module and compress and put everything into either a personal hangar or a corporate hangar to kind of offload is really beneficial. Um, the other benefit of POSs in general is anything that you're doing that gives you a debuff that disallows you to dock immediately. Um, having a POS as your in between is really, really good. So, Think about it in terms of weapons timers from, um, you know, command burst or uh, from, you know, if you come out, if, like say if you're out there ratting and you come out of uh, Bastion and uh, if you come out of Bastion and you're not that far away from your structure and you try to dock, it's not going to let you or triage modules or anything that allows you to get like a weapons timer. Pauses are great because you can just warp to them let the wait out the you know debuff to fall off and then you can go from there to docking at a station or you can just safe log from within the bubble itself one of the things i like to do is if i'm drag mining with the roracle and a bunch of hulks then i will actually warp to the pause and then i can uh just kind of wait for all of my uh, weapon timers from the uh, command burst to wear off and also i can you know siege there compress everything that I've got, put it in the corporate hangar, and then we can just go right back out and mine ice or whatever the case uh, may be. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to start, there's a lot of like e-war you can put on these things as well. The three I usually use is the uh, energy newt, the warp scram, and then the uh, stasis web. So we're going to go ahead and throw that out. This is going to be a stasis web, and it's going to come out by your ship. So we're going to come down here and we want to anchor. I usually put these pretty much close to uh, everything else that I've got. So I'm going to bring it kind of in line with uh, the battery there. And then hit anchor. And then what we'll do is since I got a couple seconds, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the, the, the warp scram. So I'll go down here and select it. I'm still looking at the sentry as like my center point for all my de uh, defensive add-ons. Grab that arrow, bring it up. Bring it roughly down over here, put it on the other side. Somewhere right in there. Hit anchor on that. And then the last one I'll do is just an energy newt. And uh, what I'll do with this is we'll just put it, we'll actually probably put it below where we normally do. Actually, now we'll put it back. We'll put it up here with everything else. And I'm not online anything yet because we can only online or anchor one thing at a time. So I'm just going to kind of put this above the sentry there. You can spend a lot of time actually, um, you know, kind of positioning this stuff and all that. So we're going to go over here. Everything's done anchoring. We're going to go ahead and online this one. And that'll take two minutes. And then the warp scram will take two minutes. And then the neutralizer will take two minutes so you kind of get the idea but um that is how to set up a pause and basically what you can do at this point is you can actually just drop navs inside of this bubble so if i go over here and i just uh i can just sit here like you see i have a nav placed on this control tower but normally if i'm in a rourke or a big ship i'll try to put a nav somewhere else in the bubble so i don't bump off of anything but yeah, if you have a nav inside this bubble, when you warp to it, you'll go right to that nav. And then when you come out of warp, you'll be inside the bubble. And uh, you'll be good to go to either safe log or, you know, AFK for a minute or uh, process, store, whatever the case may be. Hopefully, um, if you weren't familiar with player-owned star bases, this video helped you. If you needed more clarification, I'm hoping I answered those questions for you. But uh, thank you for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. 
and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.